Welcome to Lair of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, another in my series of what I call American Steel. This is where I take a moment to discuss and put the spotlight on some underground U.S. 80s metal bands that I think you should know about and check out. So the band that I picked for today is Warlord and their 1983 album, Deliver Us. Now, as I've mentioned in my other American Steel video, I'm a big fan of bands that have uh, a little bit of a classical feel to them, overtone to them, maybe a little bit of a darker atmos darker vibe that adds some atmosphere. I like great playing. I love catchy uh, vocals and good singing. And this album has all of that. It's, and that's the reason why this is one of my favorite underground U.S. metal albums. So uh, Warlord is, was from California. And uh, they released this album on Metal Blade Records in 1983. This is technically an EP because it's about 26 minutes or so long, six songs. They will go on after this to release an album, a full-length album called And the Canons of Destruction Have Begun. And on that, they redid a few of the songs that were on this album. And interestingly, they did their own uh, full-length VHS movie of them performing on stage a whole bunch of songs that would be on and the canons of destruction have begun mixed in with some interviews with them it's supposed to be live but it's really them just sort of playing along with the recordings but it's super cool i highly encourage you to check it check it out because it's got all the classic uh, early 80s uh trappings to it that we all love that i love <laughs> The atmosphere, the stage clothes, the head banging, the everything, the smoke and everything. Uh, so, okay, so the band consisted of, now on the back of the record, they all go by aliases. So you had Jack Rucker, a.k.a. Damian King on lead vocals, William Tasamis, Destroyer on guitar, and he also played bass on the record and goes under the name The Raven. Uh, Mark Zonder, Thunderchild, on drums, Diane Cornerens as the Sentinel on keyboards. Now the production on this record is just great. I love it. It's got that, uh, it's not high, it's not super high fi or anything where it's got tons of atmosphere. There's a lot of reverb that makes the drums sound really big. I love uh, William Tasamis's guitar playing. His tone is very reminiscent of Randy Rhodes' Diary of a Madman era. And his playing is very reminiscent of Randy Rhodes and Michael Schenker, which I just love because I, I'm a huge Randy Rhodes fan and I love when there's that mixture of classical and metal guitar. So uh, the album starts off with Deliver Us, uh, which begins with this wind sound and then a classical guitar playing by itself. And for me, I love when there's classical guitar in metal because it just makes it sound so epic and to me that's what this band is all about they're epic with a little bit of a sort of a doomy again ozzy diary of a madman era sound to them and then it kicks into this uh main riff which is very uh sounds reminds me of the main riff in the song diary of a madman the drums are playing sort of this military style beat underneath underneath it it's got this really catchy chorus deliver us from all this evil very catchy the singing on this is great uh jack rucker has sort of an upper mid-range type of voice clean vocals uh then there's this uh randy rhodes style guitar solo in this and the lyrics in this whole album are really great uh one of the line, the line that I really like in this is in the uh, chorus, uh, Father and Son, hear the words that we pray, deliver us from evil today. Yeah, just great. Next is Winter Tears. And the main riff has this, uh, reminds me a lot of uh, Michael Shanker's Desert Song. Da, 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 da. It has like that kind of like vibe to it and sort of a mid-tempo sort of feel to it. More great lyrics, these winter tears, I'll dry for you until we meet again. Uh, 
Child of the Damned is, is a fast one with sort of a fast like double bass drum thing going on with a really great shredding guitar solo in it. Penny for a Poor Man has a nice uh, keyboard line in the intro to the song. Although there's keyboards on this record, they play more of like a sort of add atmosphere and occasionally like double a melody line or something. There's not like keyboards through the whole thing. They just sort of come in and out here and there. Uh, there's some really nice acoustic guitar in the verses of uh, Penny for a Poor Man. Next is Black Mass, which is kind of a dark and doomier one, and it's got some really great guitar fills in it. I love when guitar players like Randy Rhodes or Eddie Van Halen, rest in, rest in peace, just passed yesterday, will do these, uh, play the riff, but then they'll also throw in like fills here and there, and uh, he does that all over this album, and especially in this song, there's some really great fills. There's one where he just starts off down, down low and just burns up really high. He has a great melodic feel to his playing, uh, but it's again, it's got that sort of Rhodes technique, but still melodic and that little bit of classical minor key overtones to what he plays. Uh, the last song is called Lucifer's Hammer, and it's an epic, catchy one with a really cool driving riff. There's nice synth lines in the chorus. The hammer will fall on you. Yes, totally epic. And it ends with this big thunderclap and then this lone classical guitar that takes the, takes the album out. So, man, it's such a shame that uh, this is such a great album. And the next album is, is great also. Uh, and it's such a shame that... Uh, I guess they experienced some lineup issues after the next record and they just never really did anything for a while. They would eventually come back and release some other albums. And although they never broke big or anything in the US, uh, they are huge over in Europe. They can headline festivals on their own, especially in Greece. They are very popular where it seems like uh, people in Greece love their epic metal and Warlord is, is one of the most revered early 80s epic um, metal bands. And uh, so if you're into that style of music with some atmosphere to it, the early 80s vibe to it, I highly recommend that you check this out. The album cover is even awesome. It's got all the things that I love, angel statues, a cemetery, dark sky. I love their band logo on the back here. This is sort of like their symbol that they use on, on all the albums. So just a great album. Mine's on Metal Blade Records. Uh, Deliver Us. So check it out for some great epic early US 80s metal. Let me know what you think in the comments if you've heard Warlord and what you think of them. Uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy. Stay metal.